Hey, what's up, guys? This is Aaron Scorzy back with another Scorzy Score segment. And today we're going to be talking about the highly anticipated, I don't know how highly, how anticipated it is, but the much anticipated new TV series Raised by Wolves. This comes from acclaim director Ridley Scott. He's, uh, I think he's just directed a couple episodes of, I don't think he's going to direct the entire series. I do think he's going to produce the entire series. I think he directed these first three episodes, but without further ado, let's jump right into it. Now, my first impressions are off the bat from the first three episodes and just in general, if I know anything about Ridley Scott, which I know a lot about his work since I've seen pretty much all of his films, you, you have understanding what you're walking into already. He's done Prometheus. I mean, this guy's he's not in his position he's in for no reason. He definitely he definitely knows how to tell a great story through through cinema, through visuals, and through the pacing and through dialogue and and, and more importantly the things he don't show or say. Like a lot of the times they give too much exposition. I think he's great with withholding enough and giving you enough to to keep coming back for more. Because the first two first three episodes pretty much jump back and forth between the flashbacks and what's currently happening, which I did not tell you guys about. So basically the premise of this show is is pretty much war torn at this point and it's unlivable, uninhabitable at this point. So the battles between these two groups, um, one's religious and one's are uh, atheists. And they pretty much, like almost most of the ancient wars, have fought over who believes what. So the war, the world is torn apart by this. And then they got to go and find a new place to live on a different planet. So the story starts off with these two androids. They land on this planet first. They try to raise these six kids. However, one by one, they all kind of fall to the illness or to due to the dangers of the terrain. With only one child being left uh, after the other five passed away um the kid named campion campion is a sole survivor with the two androids and they're trying to raise this child as best they can but it's difficult the the terrain the new world poses new threats and new dangers that they did not foresee and it's more difficult than they anticipated just to sustain life period so the story pretty much spans, I want say like 12 years past, but I think he's like a, like a preteen. So the story read really picks up then when he's a preteen, but it, it, it shows a lot. It starts there, it then goes back and shows you a bunch of other stuff that happened in the past. It shows you stuff from the, the war. And it's like you, you get all this information about these people who are, who are not who they're supposed to be or who they're shown to be or who they think they are. And one of the androids, I think you've seen the trailer enough. You saw the android was just killing people by just shouting at them, which is pretty dope. But the idea, looking at the trailer, I wasn't too sold on it. But seeing it in action in the in the series itself, I was like, okay, that's a really cool way to 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 show action and stuff without doing too much on screen. I think that her doing that alone pretty much is terrifying. I think that that really builds her character. Like it makes you really fear this person or the characters in the story fear this person that can simply scream at you and you will explode. <laughs> so that was pretty crazy. That's pretty, pretty unique, uh, pretty cool approach to that. So the main ball players are the mother and father, which are the two androids. Mother is the android that you saw in the trailers, I'm sure, who scream at people and they die. And father is the one, the other caregiver. He's just more like a service android. He can't really do that. But uh, Mother's no, what's known as a necromancer. So she was like built to kill people. And I guess she was reprogrammed to be a caregiver. And that's where the whole, you know, that whole thing where she thinks she's something that she isn't come into place. And then there are these other two people on the other side, the religious side. They're, and then they have, they have their own arc. They're trying to find their kid. And it's just, it's really, it, it adds a lot of layers onto it. And then they got the then there's two parallels between the prophecies. They got the child on the new planet, uh, Campion, who's who's an orphan by all technicality. And then you have the kid from the Ark, who's an orphan. Uh, kid Paul is an orphan. He doesn't even know he's an orphan. <laughs> like both his parents are dead. He doesn't even freaking know it. 
So then you got you have that, and it's like the two parallels of who's really the prophet, and I think that's just adds to the to the entire layer of it. Just so many, is is it's a lot of story elements that just stacks on top of each other that just allows for great character arcs and character building. Then they added these new kids to the mix, and they're just I can't wait to see what they do next in the next few episodes because they are very interesting. Got this really smart dude named Hunter who just kind of like an ass. He just kind of he's the oldest kid. And he's kind of an asshole, and he's the smartest guy in the group, and he just thinks, you know, he's just so much better than everybody else. They all have unique personalities, of course, and they kind of balance each other out. And you, you, we're exploring that. We're knowing who's the history between them and their their unique personalities and how they feel about their religion and how they feel about what's going on with their situation. And it, it gets pretty wild. Like, it gets, it gets pretty intense at some points. So starting from episode episode one when the crash landed, everything seemed pretty normal. It was pretty static. Not a lot of things happened. Um, they, they told a little bit about the they told some things about their mission there and what happened on Earth many years ago. And by the second episode, we got a lot more meat. We got a lot more details as far as what's happening. Why is this happening and who are the other players that we're up against or that we haven't seen yet or going to see very soon? He has enough arc and enough meat on this story to have it really stretch out and really be something that, that can turn into a, a, a very, very interesting and very successful, successful TV show with long legs on it. Uh, the cinematography is really cool. I love the, the cutting. The pacing of the show is, is very it's it's almost it's, I think most the three episodes I watched, they're about 40 to like 45 minutes, maybe a little longer, a little shorter, but they all felt well paced. It didn't feel like I was watching an hour, a nearly an hour long program. It really felt like 20 minutes because it, 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 things just kind of float, flow. If we flew by and the parts that were slow, felt like they were deliberately slowed down to make you understand what's happening, to give you the time to ingest what's happening and, and, and to put the pieces together yourself. Even before the characters even say, like some of the parties, they'll talk about things, they'll hint at it. They'll, they gave you small hints here and there between the dialogues instead of directly saying it, which I think I think was great because it's like, hmm, what's what's happening here? And then you can try to figure out yourself, and you're like, okay, I see what's happening. Is that what's happening? And then they say it, and you're like, okay, yeah, I'm following along. I, I get it. And so the show makes you feel like you're in the same level of, of of understanding as it. A lot of things they talk about and a lot of things they're saying is like, OK, I get that. Oh, I can see that. Or you can figure it out as the characters are figuring, are figuring it out. And I think that's pretty cool about the show. It doesn't try to be overly scientific. It's not like a lot of scientific terms being thrown, thrown around and trying to confuse you or make you believe this is this world that we're in. It was like, here's the world we're in. These are the things that's happening. You know, this was happening in the past and we're rolling with it. Like the suspension of its belief in this show is is. is it's very high. I think I think the um, the acting was is fantastic. A one across the board from the kids uh, to the adults to the like everybody. It was just like man, they got an all a great cast. I think they did a very good job casting everybody and and working with the talent. I love the the sounds, the sound design. This one is is, is and that's one that's, that's one area in my opinion that a lot of sci fi. TV shows and movies really slack at and fall off are the sounds. They make it sound very cheesy, very silly, very you know old Star Wars with the pew pew and the really weird laser techno sounds. But this, it works great. I don't. It doesn't feel cheesy. The things that happen, it feel like they're. It, it feels like real sounds that can come from machines. The music and the soundtrack, I think, are they add so much to the. I keep saying, but everything just adds so well to it. I, I think this is probably one of the better shows that's come out in the last few years. Um, I, I really, really look forward to seeing more of it. I'm excited to see what the next couple episodes come out with and what's going to happen because I'm, I'm very invested in this story. So uh, you guys stay tuned for hear more about it. And that's all I got for you today on Scores and Scores. Drop a comment below, leave a like, leave suggestions or other stuff you want me to review. And you can also check my podcast under the same name, Scores He Scores, on all streaming platforms. And I'll catch you guys in the next screening.